In this segment, we are going to cover why we adjust for operating leases. Operating leases are very common across virtually all corporate sectors. For example, retailers frequently lease their store space. Manufacturing companies often lease equipment they use, or the trucks that make deliveries of the products they manufacture. Companies commonly use leasing as a form of financing. Operating leases are particularly attractive because the cash commitments currently remain off balance sheet. And so in order to enhance the comparability of reported results for companies that use operating leases, we make analytical adjustments to companies' financials to reflect those obligations. What are credit adjusted financials? Well, financial statements and disclosures are the starting point of our financial risk analysis. However, an important part of our ratings process involves making analytical adjustments to those amounts that are reported. And adjusted numbers provide clarity into our analytical thinking as we try to get at the underlying economics. Consistency by normalizing different accounting conventions such as US GAAP and IFRS. And comparability by enhancing period over period and entity to entity comparisons. What is a lease and how are leases accounted for? In simple terms, a lease is a contract in which one party, the lessor, conveys the use of an asset to another party, the leasee, for a fixed period of time at a predetermined rate. From an accounting perspective, the company or the leasee that is leasing the asset has to classify the lease into one of two categories. A capital lease, which means the asset and liability is on the balance sheet, or an operating lease, which means it's off balance sheet and accounted for on a pay-as-you-go basis. The accounting distinction between the two is based upon very specific accounting tests, which many refer to as bright line tests. For example, if the present value of the minimum lease payments is 90% or more of the fair value of the asset, it's called a capital lease and gets put on the balance sheet. But if it's 89%, it's an operating lease and remains off balance sheet. We view the accounting distinctions such as these to be substantially artificial. Economically, in both cases, the company contracts for the use of an asset and commits to make periodic cash payments similar to a debt-like obligation. The operating lease adjustment is intended to bring financial ratios closer to the underlying economics by taking into consideration all financial obligations, whether on or off balance sheet. It's important to note, while we adjust leverage, profitability, and cash flows, this segment will only focus on the leverage calculation. How do we adjust for operating leases? Companies' operating lease commitments are currently revealed in their footnotes. Here's an example of one. Here in this section, you'll find the operating lease and the company's minimum lease payments. US GAAP requires that a company disclose five years worth of minimum lease payments and a thereafter. Our analytical adjustment seeks to capture only the debt equivalent of a company's lease contracts in place by present valuing all of these commitments. Two key factors play a role in our present value model. One, we have to distribute the thereafter number. Our methodology assumes that future payments beyond five years approximate the fifth year amount. So in this example, if we take the 291, 534, and we divide that by the fifth year amount of 148, 168, we get to approximately two years worth of runoff. The other factor is the discount rate and that requires some analytical consideration and could be determined using a number of different ways. Generally we try to use the average rate of the company's secured debt. In this example we're going to use eight and a half percent. So the present value of the 1547 to 18 at eight and a half percent equals to approximately 1197.6, nearly $1.2 billion of additional debt, which we're going to add to conventional debt.
On this slide, we're going to show you our reconciliation table, which essentially provides you transparency into our analytical thinking. In the operating lease row, you'll find the 1197.6 being added to the company's conventional reported debt. As you can see, that number amounts to approximately 69% of the company's reported debt, which provides you with some perspective as to how meaningful the operating lease adjustment truly is. It's the S&P adjusted amounts, which includes our operating lease adjustment as well as other adjustments that are used for reporting S&P credit metrics. To summarize, why do we adjust for operating leases? Because there is little economic distinction between a capital lease and an operating lease. However, one type, the operating lease, currently remains off balance sheet. Our adjustment seeks to take into consideration all financial obligations incurred, whether on or off balance sheet, and thereby improving the comparability of reported results.